Today is the first day of our new unit, Unit 3, where we're going to be exploring exponents and polynomials. So we're going to start with a quick review here of what we already know about exponents when they're applied to numbers. When we have an exponent of the form a to the n, the base is the bigger number on the bottom, and the exponent is that smaller number up here. And what exponents do is tell us how many times we should multiply that base by itself. So it's just a shorthand way of writing a long string of multiplication. So let's look at a couple examples to remind ourselves how that works. 3 to the fourth power would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And when I multiply that together, I get a total of 81. Now when negatives come in, they can kind of change what happens a little bit. If there are parentheses around the number, that's saying that the negative is also getting raised to that fourth power. So if we wanted to stretch this problem out, we would write negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Four of them in a row. These two negatives, when multiplied together, will make a positive. So will these two. So we end up still at a positive 81. This last example looks at what happens if the negative is not in parentheses. So in this case, if you think about order of operations, exponents get applied before addition or subtraction does. So in this case, it's only the 3 that's getting raised to the fourth power. And then the negative sign comes into play afterward. So we would write this one with the negative sign on the outside and then the 3 being raised to the fourth power. So this one comes out to be a negative 81 instead of a positive 81. Now we're going to look at some operations that we can do with exponents. So the first one we're going to talk about is the product rule. And the product rule says that if you have numbers that have the same base that are getting multiplied by each other, so they both have a as their base, but they have different or the same exponents that you can add those exponents together. So let's look at what that would mean in terms of some problems. This one here says 5 squared times 5. Well, if there is no exponent on the number, it's only being considered one time. It's not 5 times 5, it's just a 5 by itself. So using this new product rule, we could rewrite this problem as 5 to the 2 plus 1, otherwise known as 5 to the 3rd, which is 125. And if you think of this problem the old way, with order of operations, 5 squared would be 25, multiplied by another 5, also gets us to 125. Now let's try this technique with a couple of algebra problems. The first thing you want to do is check and make sure that you are finding a product, because you'll notice that this symbol here is not addition or subtraction or division, it's multiplication. That's what makes this a product. So if we look over here, this says y to the fourth, y to the ninth. Since there's no operation in there, we can assume that it's multiplication. So we just rewrite this as y to the 4 plus 9, which is y to the 13th. In this last example, our base is just the x, because if you remember order of operations, exponents happen before multiplication. So it's only the x that is getting raised to the fifth power, not the negative 4. And the same is true here. Only the x is getting raised to the eighth power, not the negative 10. So when we go to multiply all of this together, we can look at it as negative 4 times negative 10 times x to the 5 plus 8. So a negative 4 times negative 10 is going to give us a total of 40. 
and x to the 5 plus 8 leaves us with x to the 13th.